Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, today, uh, as I speak, and over the last 24 hours, very heavy fighting has been taking place within the vicinity, both uh, north and south, and along uh, and inside of Bakhmut. Uh, the uh, Russian forces uh, have apparently struck as many as 100 Ukrainian units over the past 24 hours uh, using fixed-wing attack aircraft, helicopter gunships, long-range artillery, and uh, other assets as, uh, as well. Uh, the Russians continue this uh, high-stress pressure campaign against Ukrainian forces specifically focused on enveloping and then eventually destroying Ukrainian forces located in and around Bakhmut. Uh, as you can see, uh, as I discussed yesterday, the Russians continue to inch their way uh, to the south-southwest of Bakhmut, looking to eventually encircle and cut off Ukrainian forces inside of Bakhmut. Furthermore, the Russian military continues operations along the Zaporizhia front as well. Uh, we have seen renewed reconnaissance and force operations by the Russian army near Vuhadar, located in this area here. Uh, we have reports uh, that uh, heavy fighting is now taking place inside the, the uh, town of Vuhadar itself as the Russian forces continue operations uh, now in the Zaporizhia area of operations. Uh, the, uh, the operations near Vuhadar have been joined by operations near Orykov or Orykiv as well as uh, the Russians continue what appears to be, again, reconnaissance operations, uh, possibly for a, uh, for a much larger operation by Russian forces directed against Zaporizhia and other towns near Zaporizhia. Now, obviously, we continue to hear that the, uh, the Russians, as are the Ukrainians, but more so now the Russians, again, are preparing for some sort of large-scale offensive operation. Uh, the uh, mass media tends to believe that a Russian operation uh, will start uh, in early spring. Uh, I, I don't rule that out. I think it is possible. I think it is possible to see continued uh, reconnaissance and force operations uh, by the Russian military, and it is possible that we could see a smaller offensive operation take place in the direction towards Zaporizhia. Uh, Zaporizhia or these operations taking place near Volodar and other, other places along the southern area uh, could be a ruse for Russian forces uh, as well. And I would say look to the possible north, but at the same time, it could be a very well a Russian operation in the direction towards Zaporizhia that we could be uh, we could see uh, getting ready to take place. Uh, we do know the Russians continue to move uh, significant amounts of forces uh, towards uh, the uh, southern area, uh, north of Melitopol and near Zaporizhia, uh, which does indicate either A, the Russians are preparing for some sort of Ukrainian counteroffensive, or the Russians indeed themselves have decided to undertake said offensive operation. Now, we again, as I've talked about before, I do not believe the Russians are going to be ready for major offensive operations until late summer. Now, obviously, the Russians are preparing, more importantly, the Russian uh, military-industrial complex is getting ready for uh, what, what could be World War III, essentially. And the reason I say that is uh, there is uh, quite a bit of speculation and analysis that indicates that the Russian state uh, is now uh, undertaking... Uh, a mass mobilization in a transition to a war 
economy. Uh, that means the Russian uh, defense budget could, in all probability, exceed 20 to 30 percent of the Russian uh, gross domestic product. So, again, uh, we, we haven't seen Russia do this before. Well, we have seen it before, and that was during World War II. But again, what Russia is doing right now is something that we have not seen Russia do in modern times. And obviously, with the level of uh, preparation, the expansion of the Russian military, things do not bode well for, I would say, humanity in general. The probability that we are looking at a third world war is increasing. The level of NATO participation in this conflict is increasing. The level of Russian buildup is increasing. Russian military objectives in Ukraine are now increasing. The Russians consider what the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is doing, the United States is doing in terms of its participation in this war, a direct attack on the Russian Federation. At this point, we here at MFAM believe that the United States and Western allies have crossed Russia's red line. Now, fortunately for the, the West, Russia is not yet ready to fight a major war against NATO. However, that is going to change. The capabilities of the Russian Federation because of this ongoing military buildup, this transition from a market economy to a controlled war economy is happening. And you don't do that unless you have certain war goals and war aims. And obviously, right now, Ukraine is the primary war goal or war aim of the Russian Federation. But again, as we move six months, one year from today, Russian capabilities are going to change. They are going to have new capabilities. Not seen in a very, very long time. And again, that is going to be the product of one, this continued mass mobilization of reservists and conscripts, but more importantly, the mobilization into a war economy. For example, it's being reported now that the Russian goal for the manufacturing of tanks is 12 tanks a day. Now that would in all probability be both the production of T-90s, the production and or upgrades of uh, T-72 Bravo 3s, the refurbishment and redeployment of T-80s, and even some T-62Ms as well. But nonetheless, that 12 tank a day goal is significant. Production of military equipment the repurposing of factories for military equipment is occurring. Where the Russians were, were probably spending 3 to 4% of its total budget on its military, again, 20 to 
the military-industrial complex, these companies that provide these resources to Russia, are now going to be uh, selling this equipment at cost. It is not going to be a for-profit operation, which we're still obviously seeing in the West. And the West has, has not converted to a wartime economy yet. Now, obviously, if the balloon goes up and we see a major war between Russia and the West, could that change? Well, yes, absolutely. But it's difficult to say what that would have on the world economy and then the possibility of the deployment of tactical nuclear weapons as well. So this is a messy situation that we are continuing to head into. And I don't think really people especially here in the West, in the United States, most folks aren't even following this conflict. Some folks don't even know it's taking place. And then, again, we could wake up one day and we could be at war with Russia. So that's where we sit. We will continue to monitor. We will continue to report. Again, we're watching uh, things very, very closely, uh, both along the uh, Zaporizhia line, running uh, uh, near Zaporizhia and then east of Zaporizhia. I'm going to call this the Southern Front. And then obviously the, uh, the eastern or the Donbass area of operations uh, towards uh, Bakhmut. Uh, it does appear, again, this uh, pressure campaign by the Russians are starting to pay off. Uh, the Ukrainians are taking significant casualties uh, in the ongoing fighting that is taking place, as are the Russians. But uh, again, uh, we're seeing the results of, uh, of lots of artillery, lots of fixed wing and, and helicopter strikes, and then obviously cruise missile strikes and uh, long-range artillery as well. But we'll continue to monitor, continue to report. Thank you for joining us today. More to come. Have a good day.